a distant cousin of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and smaller. But that doesn't stop him from being a killer. That Splitosaurus, a Pathotitan's mid-tier carnivore, capable of even going up against the Apexes. Be that as it may, going up against such foes are no easy task, and one slight miscalculation can mean death. So here's what you should do to properly fight as a Dasplodosaurus. Hello there, this is Alden Walker speaking, and today, like I just said, I will be teaching you how to properly fight as a Dasplodosaurus. Before we do all of that, I just want to get the disclaimers out of the way. First of all, just like many other dinosaurs of the game, Dasplodosaurus will probably be changed in the future, be it ability-wise or stat-wise. So these strat may be temporarily. The other disclaimer, uh, well, my time with the Dasplodosaurus are limited, so you one of your more experienced Dasplodosaurus main might not agree with everything that I say, but if you do find something disagreeable, just comment your input down in the comments and just, well, just be mature about it. Now then, without further ado, let's hop into it. First of all, we have the arsenal. We have three options for bites. We have the standard bite, but I will come out and say now that this is more significant than you would expect. I'll come back to it later. The charge up bite deals bone break based on how long it's held. It can also be used while running, though it does slow you down a bit. Pay in mind that this is also the only bite attack that uses stamina. The heavy bite has a staggering damage output, one of the highest damage output from carnivores in game, and it doesn't use any stamina. You can equip two bite abilities at the same time. Which one you should go for, I'll discuss in a minute. For now, let's cover the rest of the arsenal. Senses doesn't have an ability yet, we'll get that in the future. Hyde got two options we have the resilience scale that can increase bleed and venom healing by 30% and Tough Scouts, that increases armor by 20%. Personally, I find both of them workable, so I will leave the final decision on which one to use to you. For legs, we have Traction, which increases the turning speed at the cost of a stamina region. It's difficult to give this one a conclusion due to the fact that there are situations where the ability can be useful or not. It can be the reason for your win or the reason for your death, but do pay in mind that if you equip it while trying to recover stamina, it's going to take a long time. Moving on, we have the tail abilities, and we have two options for that. We have the normal tail attack that supposedly costs knockback, and a balance that increases turn radius. Again, each tail have their own uh, suitable situation, and I'll come back to that later. The call ability, Tyrant Roar, which are supposedly meant to uh, increase your attack, kind of not relevant in this situation due to the fact that it no longer gives you the ability once you activate it. Now it will only activate if you are in a group. If you use it and you're a solo, then it's only a waste of stamina, so don't do that. When it comes to what subspecies you should grow, I would say that defense is the worst subspecies you can grow. I would go out and say that balance is the, actually the best subspecies, Though speed are pretty good as well, but compared to the other mid-tiers like Allosaurus or Succumimus, you have less HP than them, so the extra defense in balance does come in handy. As for the bites, I did say that the standard bite are more important than you would think. For damage output, we have the standard bite and the heavy bite. The bone snap are actually more for bone breaking rather than damage output, so I'll be ignoring that for now and only discuss the standard bite and heavy bite. The bite on standard attack are 80 in output and 120 on heavy bite. It does come with a 4 second pause between each attack, where the standard attack only have 1. This damage per second is actually what concludes on what damage output alternative you should go for. What I mean is, even though the heavy bite does do more damage, the standard bite are far more dangerous due to it being capable of dishing out damage output far faster than the heavy bite. For example, let's say you're fighting something that has a thousand HP. 
Let's see which bite will kill it first. I would also like to note that on normal bite there's no delay on the attack, you just click the button and you bite instantly. This is also good if you're not too confident about your aim and timing. On the heavy bite however, there's a slight delay between the click and the actual bite. If you play on a server with rather bad ping or you're just bad at aiming and timing, then your attack can be dodged. However, there are situations where the heavy bite are better than normal attack. Take for example if you are in a group. The heavy bite are definitely made for hit and run, and that is absolutely perfect for when you're facing an opponent where facing head to head is suicide. Take also to note when you are in a group you will have access to the Tyrant Roar, and this is when the Heavy Bite really shines. So I covered which bite for damage output are superior, and now it's only the question. Between heavy bite and bone snap, which one should we choose? To be honest, the bone snap are pretty the same uh, category as heavy bite. It works best if you're in a group. Again, it's really obvious when you activate it, so of course the enemy aren't just gonna let you bite them with that. So if it does fail, you'll have your teammate to cover for you. Despite me saying that both of these attacks are best for when in a group, there are still a difference between this bite that makes one superior over the other. I've already covered that the standard bite are superior to the heavy bite if you're a solo, so you can consider damage output covered. If you equipped heavy bite, it doesn't make sense to have two damage output when one is already superior than the other. Bone break is the only status effect that you can give to your enemy and not utilizing that are kind of a waste. So if you are a solo Daspidosaurus, I would equip Normal Bite and Bone Snap. As for other abilities, let's take a look on Traction. I did say that it's difficult to give a conclusion on Traction due to there being pros and cons. For this, I will also include the Turning Tail due to it also being capable of boosting the turning speed. Let's see if it's even worth it to invest a lot in turning speed. Okay, I know it's a bit difficult to tell, but from my experience, I didn't really have any problem having no traction. What I did think was a bit bad was not having a balanced tail. I also mentioned pros and cons about having traction, and, and it just absolutely sucks to have bad stamina regen. As a matter of fact, Daspirosaurus actually have pretty decent stamina. It's even superior to that of the Allosaurus. But it makes sense when you consider that the Daspirosaurus have stamina draining abilities. From what I've experienced, it does give you the advantage if you make the battle into a battle of turn radius. But that is mostly at the beginning of a fight. When you do get low on stamina, the only thing I can recommend to you is to take a defensive stand and hope that your bite will kill them before they can kill you. What's bad about this situation is, if they can make you bleed, then they don't even need to attack you as often as you need to attack them. 
in which case you'll be at a disadvantage. To be completely honest, I would just say drop the traction at all. I will say keep the balanced tail at least. The tail attack ain't gonna do much compared to the mouth, so it's better to just have a bit mobility rather than none at all. Besides, there is a function that kinda renders the traction unnecessary. Precise movement. Knowing how to use this and when kinda renders running around unnecessary. This will also force your opponent into a head-to-head -head battle, and if it's a mid-tier, you will have the advantage. That was for 101, but what should you do if you're attacked by a pack as a solo? Of course, the obvious, if you're attacked by multiple apexes, then for the low of life run. But if you're attacked by other mid-tiers or even creatures smaller than that, then here's what you can do. And also, this is why I really recommend Bow Snap as a secondary attack over Heavy Bite. If you are attacked by something that is rather quick on their feet, then landing a blow with a Heavy Bite are rather difficult. Since the stamina drain on Bone Snap aren't too punishing, you can afford to use it more often compared to the T-Rex. And if you use your standard bite, even if you play in a laggy area, there's a higher chance that you'll actually hit something by chance even if it doesn't look like it on your screen. Of course, if you put your back against the wall, then your enemies won't be able to attack you from every direction. No matter, even if you're in an open field or you're back against the wall, as long as you place one bone snap on your enemies, that is usually the end of it. Remember, as long as it's not that much bigger than you, then you'll definitely win a head-to-head. -head. Or, well, most likely. When it comes to what terrain you should go for, well, it doesn't matter as long as you move according to your opponent. The range of your attacks are pretty much... How do I put this? All-rounder? Uh, basically what I'm saying is, almost every area are covered. It kinda more depends if you're in a group or not. Let's say you're a group of two then a large open area will suit you best, with the exception of some modern herbivores. If you take turns on attacking an enemy together, then pretty much every hunt should be guaranteed to you, even if you're just a duo. Of course I underline open and flat area. If you recall from a previous video, if the enemy has a knockback ability, Let's just say that Daspilosaurus cannot fly. Of course, if you're a mad lad and want to fight an Apex 101, then I would recommend a more covered area. An area with a lot of vegetation. This is also due to the fact that the point of view from the Apex will be a lot more covered compared to yours. The foliage can act as a cover to get you out of any sticky situation some that could be fatal in open areas. And maybe a bit unnecessary to say, but don't fight semi-aquatics in water. Wait for them to go on land and then attack them in an element where they are at a disadvantage. To heal, they need to rest on land, so just pick them up when they least expect it. Of course, if they do rest in an area where you can get to, then it's better to just walk away. So to sum it all up, as a solo, have standard and bone snap equipped. Always make sure you face the enemy, and if it's a creature of similar size, 
they make sure to force them into a head-to-head -head battle. If they try to outmaneuver you, don't try to keep up with them in a battle of turn radius. Use the precise movement to keep up with them. If it's a creature of superior stats, then a more hit-and-run strategy would be better. And if you're attacked by multiple adversaries, try your best to bone break one of them. After that, it is up to you if you want to end them or not. Before I end this video, I want you all to know that I died a lot making this, mainly to Allo players. And I had to admit, I am a bit salty over that. And I know that I made an how to fight properly as an Allosaurus not too long ago, so I just wanted to say, scratch everything I said in that video. And you know what? Allosaurus player, just jump off a cliff, cause you are all-